On August 11th, 1259, Mange Khan would die during his campaign in southern China, leaving the position of Great Khan vacant. Rather than returning to Mongolia, Kubla, the heir apparent for the throne, would continue his invasion of Song China. But in 1260, Kubla received news his younger brother, Arikbok, was challenging him for the title of Great Khan. Most of Mongay's immediate family supported Arikbok, including the members of the Agadad, Chagatai, and Jochi families. Kublo withdrew immediately from southern China and mobilized his troops to fight Arikbok, but before he left, Kubla summoned an election at Kaping, where he was elected Great Khan. This was the first election to proclaim a Great Khan outside of the Mongol homeland. Arikbok convened his own election in Karakoram that proclaimed him Great Khan a month later, creating two rival claimants for the throne. Following the news, Hulago, Kubla's older brother and ally, embarked from Mongolia, leaving behind a small force under the command of Kitbuka. But the opposing forces in the region, the Christian Crusaders and the Muslim Mamluks, took advantage of the weakened Mongol army and engaged Kitbuka's forces at the Battle of Anjalut. The Mongols were decisively defeated, and Kibuka was executed. This decisive defeat forced Hulagu to return to the Middle East, and Birke, the ruler of the Golden Horde, capitalized on the Mamluk victory, invading the Ilkhanate, beginning the Birke Hulagu War. Back in the east, Arikbok had allied with the Golden Horde in the Chagatai Khanate, while Hulagu remained the sole ally of Kubla. Kubla had access to supplies from the fertile lands of China while Arikbok had to import resources to Karakoram in the mid-arid steppes. Kublai Khan depended on Chinese supplies and needed Chinese popular support to win the civil war. Kublai worked to integrate himself to his subjects. He presented himself as an emperor capable of uniting the Chinese. Kublai promised to reduce taxes and modeled his government to resemble those of the Chinese dynasties. His policies gained him widespread support from northern China. Kubla now controlled the main supply lines into Karakoram. Khaden, Kubla's Agadad ally, defended the territories of the former Western Shia. Kubla's troops guarded the area surrounding modern-day Beijing. The only supply line still open to Arkbok was the Yanisi River Valley in the northwest. When Kubla's army advanced toward Karakoram in late 1260, Arikbok retreated, but the oncoming winter then compelled Kubla and Arikbok to encamp their armies and wait for spring. In the meantime, Khaden defeated and executed Alandar, a general sent to secure the vital Central Asian trade routes for Arikbok. Kubla's victories left Algu as Arikbok's only standing ally. Arikbok convinced Algu to take control of the Chagatai Khanate in Central Asia. The Khanate became an important source of Arikbok's provisions. In 1261, Kubla and Arikbok engaged in battle at Sumultai. Arikbok was defeated and forced to retreat, but managed to keep his army intact, and he returned to the region ten days later, where he fought a small portion of Kubla's army. Even so, the battle ended in a stalemate, leaving most of Mongolia under the control of Kubla. At this time, a rebellion in China forced Kubla to pull back from an almost certain victory. After the threat of an attack by Kubla receded, Arikbok went to war with his ally Algu. The war would result in a stalemate and would leave Arikbok with few allies. And following the threat of a counterattack from Algu, which Arikbok lacked resources or allies to defend against, he would travel to Shangdu alone and surrendered to Kubla in 1264, ending the civil war. Though Arikbok's defeat by Kubla could not stop the fracturing of the empire, when Kubla convened his election to confirm his status as Great Khan, none of the three other Khans attended. Most of the Western Khans did not recognize Kubla as Great Khan, and the four Khanates were functionally independent states. Many of the Khanates had close diplomatic relations and shared scientific and cultural knowledge, but military cooperation between all four Khanates would never occur again. Internal division and wars between the Mongol states continued. Birke and Hulagu continued fighting until Hulagu died in 1265. 
and the subsequent Kedu Kubla War greatly weakened the authority of the Great Khan over the entirety of the Mongol Empire. In 1271, Kublai renamed the new Mongol regime in China as a Yuan dynasty and moved his headquarters to what would become Beijing. After the fall of Zhenyang, the Chinese Song imperial family surrendered to the Yuan in 1276, making the Mongols the first non-Chinese people to conquer all of China. Following this, Kublai further pursued expansion with invasions of Burma and Dai Viet, which were costly and ended in devastating defeat. In 1274 and again in 1281, Kublai Khan invaded Japan. However, he was not able to conquer Japan and he would die in 1294 and was succeeded by his grandson, Tamir Khan. When Ghazan took the throne of the Ilkhanate in 1295, he formally accepted Islam as his own religion, marking a turning point in Mongol history. Despite this, Ghazan continued to strengthen ties with Tamir Khan and the Yuan dynasty in the east. After a bloody battle between Kedu and Temur's armies near the Zakhan River in 1301, in which Kedu would be killed and succeeded by Dua, this would end nearly a century of conquest and civil war, which was followed by relative stability, and international trade and cultural exchange flourished between Asia and Europe. Communication between the Yuan Dynasty in China and the Ilkhanate in Persia further encouraged trade and commerce between East and West. In 1304, all of the Khanates approved a peace treaty accepting Yuan Emperor Temur's supremacy. This established the nominal supremacy of the Yuan Dynasty over the Western Khanates, which would last for several decades. This supremacy was based on weaker foundation than that of the earlier Khans, and each of the four Khanates continued to develop separately and function as independent states. After the death of Yasun Temir, civil war erupted in the Yuan Dynasty in 1328-1329. through 1329. Teh Temir became the new Khan and Khan Balak, while Yasun Temir's son, Ragiba, succeeded to the throne in Shangdu, leading to civil war, known as the War of the Two Capitals. Ta Temir would decisively defeat Ragiba and be elected in 1329. With the death of Ilkhan Abu Set Batur in 1335, Mongol rule faltered and Persia fell into political anarchy. Along with the dissolution of the Ilkhanate in Persia, Mongol rulers in China and the Chagatai Khanate were also in turmoil. The plague known as the Black Death, which started in the Mongol dominions and spread to Europe, added to the confusion. Disease devastated all of the Khanates, cutting off commercial ties and killing millions. As the power of the Mongols declined, chaos erupted throughout the empire, as non-Mongol leaders expanded their own influence. The Golden Horde lost all of its western dominions to Poland and Lithuania between 1342 and 1369. The last Yuan ruler, Togon Temir, was powerless to regulate those troubles a sign that the empire had nearly reached its end. Increasingly isolated from their subjects, the Mongols quickly lost most of China to the rebellious Ming forces and in 1368 fled to their heartland in Mongolia. The two main parts of the Chagatai Khanate were defeated by Timur, who would go on to found the Timurid Empire. However, remnants of the Chagatai Khanate survived, and the last remnants of the Chagatad state to survive was the Yarkinic Khanate, until its defeat by Oirat in 1680. The Golden Horde broke into smaller Turkic hordes that declined steadily in power over four centuries. Among them, the Khanate Shadow, the Great Horde, survived until 1502. The Crimean Khanate lasted until 1783, whereas Khanates such as the Khanate of Bukhara and the Kazakh Khanate lasted even longer. Thank you everybody for watching, please leave a comment letting me know your thoughts and consider liking and subscribing as it truly helps me make a better video for everybody and as always thank you for watching The Knowledge Show.